Hello, this is Gregory Maxwell, and in this brief lesson, we will be talking about dividing polynomials, division of polynomials. We will be talking about dividing a polynomial by another polynomial. This is uh, expected to be relatively short, um, but let's get started right away. When we're dividing a polynomial, we may divide a polynomial by either a monomial or a binomial or another polynomial. We'll talk about all three situations. And in, in addition, we will be doing a special case of synthetic division. Um, as, a, as a reference here, many of the points I'm making and some of the snippets I have on the screen are from the textbook Intermediate Algebra, second edition by Miller, O'Neill, and Hyde. And this is found in section 5.3 of that textbook. So let's get started about dividing poly a polynomial by a monomial. A monomial is a polynomial with only one term. And polynomials are separated, terms of polynomials are separated by an addition or a subtraction operation. So when the term only has things multiplied together, then that's only one term. So if you recall a rule of real numbers, if A and B and C are numbers, and in this case polynomials, if you have a plus b divided by c, you can rewrite that as a over c plus b over c. It's basically the reverse of adding fractions with the same denominator. So now we're just separating them back to their component parts of the addition or the subtraction. So when we do, uh, apply that to dividing a polynomial by a monomial, it becomes a very simple process of simply splitting up the expression into components. So what I will do is write this division as a fraction. 6p squared minus 18p to the 4 plus 30p to the 5. And that is divided by 6p, which I will write as over 6p. And then what I will do now is use that rule. When you have a common denominator, it's because each term shares that denominator. So now we have 6p squared over 6p minus 18p to the 4 over 6p plus 30p to the 5 over 6p. Each term is over the same denominator. And now what we will do is just simplify each part. The 6s would cancel in the first term, and 1p here will cancel with two, one of the p's leaving just the 1p behind. 6 goes into 18 three times in the second term, this p at the bottom will cancel with one of the p's uh, out of the four multiply, leaving three of them. Six goes into 30 five times. This one p will cancel with one of these five p's, leaving four of them behind. So then when I simplify the result, the result is one p, which is just p, minus three p to the, one of these p's got canceled, leaving three of them, so three to the p to the three, plus five p to the four. And that is our resulting quotient from the division of the polynomial by the monomial. It is that easy. Let's go on to the next one here. 25m to the five n minus 10m to the four n plus m cubed n divided by five m cubed n. Note again, this is a one term because it's not separated by addition or subtraction. Everything's multiplied. So I'm gonna rewrite that again as a, as a, a fraction, as, and you can skip that step if you're now comfortable with that, but I'll write it for the sake of the uh, lesson here. So uh, 25m to the 5n minus 10n to the 4n plus m cubed n, and that is divided by 5m cubed n. And then I will rewrite that as each term in the numerator, 25m to the 5n, divided by the denominator, 5m cubed n minus 10m to the 4n divided by 5m cubed n, and then plus m cubed to the n over 5m cubed n. Now at this point I'd like to remind us that you need to be comfortable with exponent rules and simplifying expressions by working with exponents because that will matter in this situation. Now 5 goes into 5, 25 5 times, m cubed will go into, will take off three of those m's in the numerator leaving two of them, and the n's will cancel. 
Likewise here, the ends cancel again. 5 goes into five, 10 two times, and these three M's will cancel three of these, leaving one of them behind. The M cubes will cancel, and the ends will cancel, leaving just the 5 in the denominator. So when we're done now, each term, the 5 was left, and M to the 2, and because the ends were canceled, that's it, 5M squared minus 2 was left, and just one of the m's was left after the cancellation occurred, and then uh, that was it, the n's were cancelled. Then plus, last term, there's a 1 on the numerator and, and 5 in the denominator, all the variables got cancelled, and that is the result of that division. That is our quotient. Let's go on to another slightly more challenging looking question and what we will do here is already written in a, in a, in a format that uh, indicates um, a, a division so let's take a quick look at how we'll do that we'll split it up into each term so we have negative 8r to the 4w squared divided by negative 4r cubed w then minus 4r cubed w divided by negative 4r cubed w. Now, I'm, let me just pause here and point out that since we're dividing by a negative, what I'm going to do is write this as plus negative, and that will allow us to do a simpler cancellation, plus 2w cubed divided by negative 4r cubed w. Now let's start going through and do a little cancellation here. This negative 8 cancels with ne negative 4, leaving 2 in the numerator and 1 in the denominator. These three r's in the denominator will cancel with three of the r's in the numerator, leaving just one r behind. And this w in the denominator will cancel with one of these two w's, leaving one of them behind. So that part, that expression, will work out to be 2RW, because those are what's left off. All the terms in the denominator got canceled. Then, right here, we have a plus negative divided by negative. The negative divided by negative will be a positive. And each, the whole thing here is the same as the whole thing down here. So whenever you divide something by itself, you get 1. So right here, we just have a plus 1. And then, here, we're dividing a positive by a negative. That's going to leave us with a negative answer. And uh, the 2 will go into the 4 two times, but that 2 is in the denominator. The, this w will cancel with one of those w's leaving 2 behind. And so there's nothing to cancel the r. So in the numerator, we just have 1w squared, which I'll just write as w squared. And in the denominator, I have 2. And I, because of this negative, I put the negative in front already. So I have 2r cubed. That was what's left behind. And that is the end of our division with, by a monomial right here. And uh, that is a relatively simple process, so just follow it sim st systematically, step by step. Let's go on to the next concept. And again, as I said before, these, less, these explanations are from the book uh, Intermediate Algebra by Miller and uh, Miller O'Neill and uh, uh, and Hyde, sec edition, second edition, and this is from section 5.3. So if the division, divisor has two or more terms, a long division process similar to the division of real numbers is used. So here's the process of what we will do. First, we will write the uh, divisor and the dividend. So the dividend is the part that is being divided. That would normally be the numerator or the part on top. And the divisor is the, di the part doing the dividing. That's normally in the denominator. And so we'll write them in standard form, from highest power of x down to the lowest. I'd like to point out here that if there is a term that is skipped over, you will put that term in with a coefficient of that term being 0. For example, in this case, we have negative 2x cubed 
minus 10x squared plus 56. There was no x term listed, but there's supposed to be an x term. It's not there because the coefficient is zero. When we are doing the division, we will write that term in with its coefficient. So we'll write it as negative 2x cubed minus 10x squared plus 0x plus 56. We do not skip any terms. And we will also, we don't need to do that for the divisor, but we definitely need to do that for the dividend, the part being the dividing. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the leading term in the divisor and we're going to divide it into the leading term of the, uh, of the dividend. So I'll do 2x goes into negative 2x cubed. Now, I usually like to write it over the term I'm dividing by. In this explanation, they put it over the term with a matching degree. That's fine. It's not a big difference. Whatever is more comfortable for you, you can do. In my examples that I will be doing, um, I will be do it, writing it slightly differently, but it will be the same process. So now, 2 goes into negative 2, negative 1, and x goes into x cubed, x squared. So that's the result of just dividing the first term in the divisor by the first term in the dividend. That's all we'll do at this step. Then, step number 2, we will multiply that result of the division by each term in the divisor by each term in the divisor. So I'm going to multiply negative x squared by 2x. That gives me negative x, 2x cubed. And then I'm going to do negative x squared by negative 4. That gives me positive 4x squared. So that's the next step. So those steps are both, usually they're both put together as, 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 as one step. Divide by the leading coefficient, leading term by the leading term in the divisor and multiply the result by each term in the divisor. Step, next step beyond after that is to subtract the result of that product from the expression above. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to subtract this whole expression from the dividend. Now because the first terms are going to be the same and they're supposed to be the same, those will cancel after the subtraction. So negative 2x cubed minus negative 2x squared effectively is negative 2x cubed plus 2x squared. So that will just become 0. Then negative 10x squared minus 4x squared, that will become negative 14x squared. And then what will happen is we will uh, drop the other terms down. They don't indicate that, but we'll do that in the notes. Now, once we do that, the next thing we need to do before we move on is to check is the degree of the divisor greater than the degree of the remaining remainder after subtraction? If it's not greater, then we can divide. So if the degree of the divisor is either less than or equal to the degree of the expression after subtraction, we repeat the process. So I'm going to divide 2x into negative 14x squared, and that will give me negative 7x. And then I'm going to multiply that negative 7x by each term, again, in the divisor as before. And then we will subtract, we will subtract our, uh, we'll subtract our expression from the expression above. So, right again, we're going to do a little subtraction here. We're going to subtract, we're going to multiply negative 7x by 2x, that's negative 14x squared. Negative 7x by negative 4, that's positive 28. And then we're going to end up subtracting those two. I'll show that on the next page. When we're doing the subtraction, what will end up happening is that the sign of, the exp of each term in the expression changes. So we will end up with this result here. We're going to just add 14x squared and subtract 28x. Going through the process again, as before, these first terms cancel. The 0x that was brought down from the previous step is now going to be subtracting. And, of course, this 56 will also be brought down. But it's not going to be subtracting anything at this time. So we'll just write it in as, a, you know, plus 56. This 0x minus 28x is negative 28x and this 56 plus a minus 0 which is nothing there will just be 
56. The degree of this term is still the same as this, so we can divide one more time. 2x into negative 28x is negative 14, which then gets multiplied to each term in the divisor. Negative 14 times 2x is negative 28x. Negative 14 times negative 4 is positive 56. At this point, we will then subtract this expression from the expression above and see what we end up with. It turns out that the expression we are subtracting is the same as the expression we are subtracting from. So it's a term subtracting itself. So the remainder here is zero. So the divisor perfectly divides into the dividend, and this is the quotient. So if you have, if I were to write this out, I would then say, and I'll squeeze it in on the side here, I would then say negative x squared minus 7x minus 14 divided by 2x minus 4 is going to equal to negative x squared minus 7x minus 14. That is the divide, dividend divided by the divisor gives the, uh, the quotient. So that is our result. And that is the answer that is written down, down here. Now, let's try something a little bit more challenging. Still going through um, the notes from the same textbook that we are working with here. So, in this case, we're doing in this case, we're doing 15x cubed minus 4 plus 6x to the 4 minus 15 5x squared divided by 3x squared uh, minus 4. That, that, to do this division, we are going to write both terms in standard form. So we'll rearrange this expression so the highest power of x is first down to the lowest power, which is a constant. So we have 6x to the 4, then plus 15x cubed then minus x minus 5x squared and since there's no x term we'll add in a plus 0x and then minus 4 and then we're going to divide by 3x squared minus 4. We'll put them um, in the structure as we did before. We do not need the 0x in the, div in the divisor, we only needed it, needed it in the dividend but in this particular expression they, it's cho they chose to put it in there so we'll go along with that. So what we do now is we divide 3x squared into 6x to the 4, that gives 2x squared. And then we multiply the 2x squared by the 3x squared. And then by each term in the, in the uh, we're going to multiply by each term in the divisor. So we're going to multiply 2x squared by 3x squared and 2x squared by negative 4. Times 0 will still give me 0, so that will not be much of an inconvenience. We just need to make sure when we multiply, we put the same degrees together. So 2x squared times 6, 3x squared is 6x to the 4. And 2x squared times negative 4 is negative 8x, is uh, negative 8x squared. So I'm going to write that in right here. I'm going to write that as uh, 6x to the 4 minus 8x uh, squared. And then... I'm going to subtract both those terms from the expression above. And then 6x to the 4 minus 6x to the 4 would disappear. 15x cubed has nothing to subtract, so it's just going to come back down. And then negative 5x squared minus negative 8x squared is negative 5x squared plus 8x squared, which is 3x squared. And then the other terms will just be uh, brought down as part of the result. And then the degree again is of the divide of the result is greater than the degree of the divisor, so we go through the process again. 3x squared goes into 15x cubed, leaving 2x squared. Uh, sorry, leaving 5x, and then we're going to multiply that 5x by each term. 5x multiplied by 3x squared is 15x cubed, and 5x times negative 4 is negative 20x, which we will then subtract which will change both sides. So we have 15x cubed minus 15x cubed, 3x squared minus nothing, which is, nothing is there, 0x squared, even 3x squared. And then 0 plus 
20x, which is 0 minus negative 20x, is 20x. And then this negative 4 gets dropped down. So we continue again. The degrees are the same, so we can divide 3x squared into 3x squared is 1. Multiply 1 by each term, we get 3x squared by, uh, minus 4, which we then subtract. 20x will subtract 0x. Negative 4 minus negative 4 would be positive 4, uh, would be 0. So the only thing that is left is 20x. The degree of this term is now smaller than the degree of the divisor, so this becomes my remainder. So the answer is this expression divided by this expression is this quotient with the remainder of 20x, which we write as a fraction as 20x over the divisor. Now what we will do is spend a little time doing a few examples here, step by step. So let's start off with this nifty little example here. We're going to start off by setting up our division. And you'll see that I will do this a little differently than what the notes that I just went through indicate, but they're basically the same process. I write z minus 4. I put a slash through my z so it doesn't get confused with a 2. I would recommend that you do the same thing. So we have z cubed minus 2z squared plus 2z minus 5. There's no missing terms, so we're good to go. Step number one, divide z into z cubed, and that will give us z squared. Then I'm going to multiply that z squared by each term in the divisor, so that will give me, I'm going to write this in a different color here, z cubed minus 4z squared. As you can see, I put the result of the multiplication under the matching expression. Then I'm going to subtract, I'm going to subtract that new expression from the expression above. So when I do that now, we're going to end up with the following. z cubed minus z cubed is 0 negative 2z squared minus negative 4z squared is the same as negative 2z squared plus 4z squared, and that will give us 2z squared. And then we have 2z, will not have anything to subtract, so we'll just assume it's subtracting 0, and likewise with the negative 5, it's not subtracting anything. So basically what we just did was just brought those additional terms down. Now, since the degree here is greater than the degree of the divisor, we go through the same process again. z goes into 2z squared, and that results in a positive 2z. Now, I don't need to write it over this term in the same degree, but I do need to make sure I do that when I do the multiplication. 2z times z is 2z squared, and 2z times negative 4 is negative 8z. And again, we do our little... Uh, our little division, our little subtraction, sorry, of that expression from the term above. And then we check again. So 2z squared minus 2z squared is 0. 2z minus negative 8z is 2z plus 8z, which is 10z. And then negative 5 minus 0 is just negative 5. So we can just take that down. And then we check same degree, so we can divide again. Z into 10z is positive 10. And then 10 times z is 10z. Let me write it in green here. 10z. And 10 times negative 4 is negative 40. And then we will subtract that from the expression above. And we will... See whether we get 0 or we get a remainder. The 10 z's cancel. Negative 5 minus negative 40 is negative 5 plus 40, which is 35. Since this is, uh, there's no uh, 
x in the in this result that will be our remainder and that brings us to the end of that division let's write our answers down here so z cubed minus 2z squared plus 2z minus 5 that quantity divided by the quantity z minus 4 is equal to z squared plus 2z plus 10 plus remainder 35 over quotient z over divisor sorry z minus 4 and that is the end of that question Continuing on, we have number 32, similar approach, so let's get to it. We do our division symbol, divisor 4x minus 3, um, dividend 28x squared minus 29x plus 6. Let's see what we can do for that one. We do 4x into 28x squared. We only divide by the leading term. 4x into 28x squared is 7x. Then I'm multiplying the 7x by each term. So that will give me 28x squared minus 21x. And then what I will do is I will subtract that expression from the above expression and then check that result again to see if we can do another division. So 28x squared minus 28x squared is 0. Negative 29x minus negative 21x is negative 8x. And then 6 minus nothing or 6 minus 0 actually is 6. So then we go through the process again because the degrees are the same. 4x into negative 8x is negative 2 and then negative 2 multiplied by 4x uh, minus 3 is negative 8x plus 6. And so then we do a, our little subtraction again. And in this case, we can see that we're actually subtracting an expression from itself. So the remainder is 0. And since the remainder is 0, then that means that would have been a perfect division. This guy is a factor of this expression. The divisor is a factor of the dividend. So if I were to write this, I would probably put this as 28x squared minus 29x plus 6 quantity divided by the expression Four x minus three, and that will give us seven x minus two, which is the divide the quotient, and there is no remainder. It's a perfect division, or I should say, the remainder is zero. Now let's try a couple more examples, then we'll talk about synthetic division. <laughs> These are a little bit more involved. In this case. This one looks pretty simple, but it's not really if you look at it because they missed out a number of terms in the dividend. So we're going to have to make sure we include those terms in our division. So the divisor is 3x plus 1. The dividend is 81x to the 4. There's no, zero, no, no x cubed term, so I put 0x cubed. There's no x squared term, so I put 0x squared. No x term, so I put plus 0x, and the constant is minus 1. And then we go through the process. 3x into 8 to 1x to the 4 is 27x cubed. And then I multiply 27x cubed by each term. I get 81x to the 4 plus 27x cubed. Then we're going to 
subtract that expression from the expression above it under the uh, division. 81x to the 4 minus 81x to the 4 is 0. And then 0 minus 27, 27x cubed is negative 27x cubed. The other terms are basically subtracting 0. So I just bring them down unchanged, at least at this point. <clears throat> Then I go through the process again. 3x into negative 27x cubed is negative 9x squared. And then, and uh, pardon me, let me just uh, do a slight adjustment to my work here, just to give us a little breathing space. And then 9x squared multiplied by negative 9x squared multiplied by 3x is negative 27x cubed. And then negative 9x squared times 1 is negative 9x squared, which I will then subtract from the expression above. And then, let's see what we end up with. Negative 27x cubed minus 27x cubed is 0. 0 minus negative 9x squared is positive 9x squared. And then plus 0x and then minus 1, which were brought down again because they are effectively subtracting 0. Again, we go through the process because the degrees uh, of the divisor is still less than or equal to the degree of the, of the expression here. 3x into 9x squared is 3x we multiply 3x by 3x uh, and 1, we get negative 9x, oops, sorry, pardon me, 9x squared plus 3x, which will then be subtracted. And then we will check that result. Well, we subtract 9, 9x squared minus 9x squared is 0. 0 minus 3x is negative 3x, and then minus 1. So we'll take the 1 down. We'll go through the process again, because the degrees they, they match. 3x into negative 3x is negative 1. Negative 1 times each term is negative 3x minus 1. And when I subtract those two expressions, I get zero because the the uh, terms are exactly the same. So our remainder here is zero. So then my result then is 81x to the 4 minus 1 divided by divided by 3x plus 1. That gives you 27x to the 3 minus 9x squared plus 3x minus 1. 27x cubed minus 9x squared plus 3x minus 1. That's our answer there. Let's do one more example, and then we'll move on to synthetic division. Now we're dividing a large expression by a trinomial. Let's go through that process right now. This one may be quite a bit involved, maybe. Try to make sure I have a long enough division bar there. So we have... 2a squared minus 5a plus 2. And we're dividing that into the expression. Two a to the five minus seven a to the four plus eleven a cubed minus twenty-two a squared plus twenty-nine. 
a minus 10. Let's go through that process now. 2a squared into 2a to the 5 is just a cubed. Then we'll multiply a cubed to each term. a cubed times 2a cubed. a squared is 2a to the 5. a cubed times negative 5a is negative 5a to the 4. And a cubed times 2 is 2a cubed, which will then be subtracted from the expression above. And then we will repeat the process. So 2a to the 5 minus 2a to the 5 is 0. Negative 7a to the 5 minus negative 5a to the 5 will be negative 2a to the 5. To the 4, I'm sorry, not to the 5, to the 4. 11a cubed minus 2a cubed is 9a cubed. Positive. And then the other terms are all subtracting 0, which is not indicated, but that's what's really there. 0. So then we just uh, basically dropped those terms down, and then we go through the process again. 2a squared into negative 2a to the 4 is negative a squared. Multiply that negative a squared by each term. We get a squared, negative a squared times 2a squared is negative 2a to the 4. Negative a squared times negative 5a is positive 10a cubed. I'm sorry, not 10, 5. And then negative a squared times 2 is negative 2a squared. And then, of course, we will be subtracting and dropping those other terms down. And we're going to go through the process one more time, at least one more time, maybe more. Let's keep going here. So our expression becomes negative 2a to the 4 minus 2a to the 4 is 0. 9a cubed uh, uh, minus 5a cubed is 4a cubed. And then negative 22a squared minus negative 2a squared is negative 20a squared. And then the other terms are just subtracting 0, so they get dropped. And then we go through the process again. 2a squared into 4a cubed is positive 2a. We multiply. 2a times 2a squared is 4a cubed. 2a times negative 5a is negative 10a squared. And then 2a times 2 is plus 4a. And so I will subtract that expression from the one above and of course I will drop my negative 10 down and then we will check again to see if we can do another division. So we end up with 4a cubed minus 4a cubed 0, 20a squared minus negative 10a squared, sorry negative 20a squared minus 10, negative 10a squared is negative 10a squared and 29a minus 4a is uh, 25a and then we have the minus 10 turns out we can go one more time because the degrees are the same so 2a squared into negative 10a squared is negative 5 negative 5 times 2a squared is um, going to give us negative 10a squared negative 5 times negative 5a is negative 25a sorry negative times negative is positive and then um, negative 5 times positive 2 is negative 10. And then we're going to subtract that from the expression above. And as we see again, we're subtracting something from itself. So as a result, the remainder is 0 and the expression was perfectly divided. So our answer, which I won't write down the whole thing again, our answer is the, uh, is the quotient, which is a cubed minus a squared plus 2a 
minus 5. There you go. All right, let's talk a bit about synthetic division. Synthetic division is actually a shortcut for doing long division in a specific case. In this specific case, you're dividing by a linear expression whose leading coefficient is 1. So x minus a number or x plus a number. So we are dividing here in this example 3x squared minus 14x minus 10 divided by x minus 2. That division fits the, 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 the necessity, the conditions for using the synthetic division shortcut. Now let's go through the process of how we would do that. What we are going to do is first we're going to take this expression here and we're going to rewrite that expression by setting it equal to 0 and solving for x. And that x term, we're going to call that term r. And that r is going to be key in our synthetic division process. It's actually going to be our nice shortcut. So we take the divisor, set it equal to 0, call that little guy r, which we're going to use as our process. Now, if you did long division, you would see long division goes to the process that gives us 3x minus 8 with a remainder of negative 26. So let's go through that now and see what happens if we were to do it with synthetic division. For synthetic division, step number one is we're going to take the dividend and we're going to write each coefficient without the corresponding variable. Remember, if there's a missing term, you need to put that coefficient as well. That coefficient would be zero. So in this case, what we will do, instead of writing 3x squared minus 14x minus 10, as we do here, we're just going to write 3, then negative 14, then negative 10. Then next to that, we will write the r that we obtained from taking the divisor and setting it equal to zero and solving for x. That number that x is equal to, that's my r, and that's going to be right next to that process there. That's the first step r and then the, the coefficients. Step number two, drop the first term. Whatever it is, just write it down here. So the three become, is going to go down here. We put a little line. That line is important because we're going to fill in these spaces. So the three gets dropped down here. And then what we're going to do next, and remember, I just want to remind us here that this guy is from 3x squared minus 14x minus 10. Those are the coefficients. So once we drop the 3 down, the next step is to multiply this r2 by this number here, 3. 2 multiplied by 3 is now going to give us 6. And that 6 is going to get written underneath the next term. We have it indicated down here. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 is going to be written here. And then the step following that is to add those two terms, not subtract, we're going to add. So this 14 is going to get added to this 6 that was obtained from multiplying the r by the 3. Negative 14 plus 6 is negative 8. Then we're going to repeat that process. We're going to multiply this 2 by this negative 8, and then we're going to add the answer, put the answer here and add it to the number above. So the next step is 2 multiplied by negative 8 is negative 16. And then negative 16 um, will be added to negative 10. Once again, we're adding these terms. Negative 10 plus negative 16 is negative 26. Now we're at the end of the process. The last number we ended up with, that will be our remainder then the other two terms will be our coefficients, but the degrees will be one less than what we started out with. So in this case, we started out with an expression of degree 2, 3x squared minus 14x minus 10. Our new expression is going to drop by a degree. So now instead of 3x squared, it will just be 3x and then minus 8. We just follow the, the, the expressions down. So then the result then 
of the division of 3x squared minus 14x minus 10 divided by x minus 2 is equal to 3x minus 8, that's my quotient, plus negative 26 over the divisor, x minus 2. And that's, that, there you have it. Let's do a few examples from here on. And that should take us to the end of this, uh, what's supposed to be a short lesson. So, we have 4c to the 4 minus 3c squared minus 6c minus 3 divided by c minus 2. In this case, we're going to rearrange our expression for a divisor. It fits the conditions. So I'm going to just put it aside here. I'm going to say, hey, this thing here is c minus 2 is equal to 0. Let's solve for c. That means c is equal to 2. So that's going to be my r, my number that I'm going to put next to the expression here. Then I'm going to put that 2 in a little enclosure there. And then I'm going to put my coefficients. 4 c cubed. There's 4 c to the 4. There's no cube term. So I'll put 0 for that coefficient. And then negative 3 c squared. So I'll put negative 3. Then there's a negative 6 c. And then there's a constant. So we needed to put in a term here because they were missing a term. They were missing the cube term. So I'm going to just indicate that this was 0c cubed was added to this expression. Then I'm going to skip a line, draw my little uh, bar below here, and then we're going to proceed with our operations. So the first thing we will do always is to drop the leading term. So I'm dropping the 4, so we end up with 4 here. Then I'm multiplying 2 by 4. 2 multiplied by 4 is 8. So I'll add 8 under that term, and then we're going to add those two terms. 0 plus 8 is 8. And then I'm going to repeat the process. 2 multiplied by 4 is 16. So I'm going to put 16. I'm going to add 16 to the expression above, which is a plus. Negative 3 plus 16 is 13. Then I'm going to multiply. 2 multiplied by 13 is 26. And then I'm going to add that 26 to negative 6. Negative 6 plus 26 is 20. So we end up with 20. And then I'm going to multiply 2 by 20. 2 by 20 is 40. And then I'm going to add those terms. Negative 3 plus 40. And that will give me... 37. Now, since this is my last result, this guy here is going to be my re remainder. This is the remainder. The remainder will always be a number, not an expression with x, because the remainder has to be a, have a degree lower than the divisor. And since the divisor has degree 1, the remainder has to, has to have a degree 0, which means it's a constant. So then the answer for our division and I'll just write both parts out here. Well, no, I'll just write the answer out. It's 4. Since it's just c to the 4, I'm going to write that this guy will now be c to the 3. So it's 4c cubed. Then the next term is plus 8c squared. Then the next term is plus 13c. Then the next term is plus 20. And then the remainder will be written over the divisor, c minus 2. And just to remind us, this guy is called the quotient. This is the remainder. And this guy here, of course, is the divisor. Let's move on to our next examples. A few questions here to do. These will be relatively easy to accomplish. Again, 
synthetic division is a nice simple shortcut so first of all when I take my little expression here set it equal to 0 and solve for h I get h is equal to negative 3 so that's going to be my r so I'm going to put negative 3 and then I'm going to put my coefficients coefficient of h squared is 1 coefficient of h is 7 and then 12 and then I'm going to go through my process I'm going to drop my leading coefficient and then I'm going to multiply that number by the r negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 Then I will add my two um, results here my expressions here 7 over negative 3 at those numbers 7 plus negative 3 is 4 and then negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 and then I will add negative 12 to 12 and that will give me 0 so my remainder here since that's the end of the, the track the remainder here is 0 and seeing that that is the remainder then that means this was a factor it could go right into it so the answer that I will end up with now is and I'll write the whole thing out h squared plus 7h plus 12 divided by h plus 3 is equal to since this was a h squared now this is just h and then the next term is 4 so the answer is h plus 4 now let's try the same process here again in this case when I take the w plus 2 I set it equal to 0 solve for w I get negative 2 so I'm going to go through the process my r is negative 2 and then I have coefficients of 3 1 and negative 5 and then I draw my little um, line for the process I drop my 3 down I always drop the first coefficient down so we have 3 and then negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 which I will then add to 1 which will give me negative 5 and then I multiply negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10 which I will then add to negative 5 above which will give me positive 5 and that will be my remainder So my answer then, which I'll write out again, is uh, 3w squared plus w minus 5 divided by w plus 2 is going to equal to 3w one degree less minus 5 plus the remainder of 5 over w plus 2 and that is my division all right let's move on to number 56 in this case the degrees are all real um, misarranged so we have to rearrange this expression into its correct format so we have 3y squared plus oh sorry 3y cubed plus 7y squared minus 4y plus 3 and then this term is y plus 3 which will give me negative 3 as my r and then I go through the process as always so we have negative 3 and our coefficients are 3 7 negative 4 and 3 and then of course we're going to drop our leading uh, coefficient down and continue with the process so we have 3 and then we're going to multiply negative 3 by 3 
and that gives us negative 9, which we will then add to 7. And then 9, negative 9 plus 7 is negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10. And negative 3 times negative 10 is positive 30. And 30 plus 3 is uh, I seem to have missed something here. Let's try this again. Um, 3 times 3, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. 7 plus negative 9 is negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Made a little error there. Positive 6 plus negative 4 is negative 2. And then negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6 again. So our negative 3 times positive 2, I keep making some simple mistakes here. Negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2. And then negative 3 plus times negative 2 times 2 is negative 6. Which I, when I add it to that, I get negative 3. And that will be my remainder. So the result then, I'll just write the answer out now. Our answer then is... Since the degree here was 3, then this is 3y squared. The degree goes down by 1. Then the next term as the lower, next lower, lower number, then plus 2. Then plus our remainder, which is negative 3 over the divisor y plus 3. All right, we're doing well so far. Let's push on to the last two examples. Now, with this one, same process as before. We have to make sure, if you notice here, we're missing two terms. So I'm just going to remind us here that this is really 3y to the 4 plus 0y cubed minus 25y squared plus 0y minus 18. All right. And of course, this will give us 3 as my r. So I'll put 3 here. My coefficients then will be 3, 0, negative 25, 0, and negative 18. By the way, if there's a constant missing, you also need to put 0 in place of that constant. If this last term was, a, was not there, you'll need to put a zero there as well. So let's go through the answer here, the process. I drop my three down and then I multiply three times three is nine and then zero plus nine is nine and three times nine is 27 and negative 27 plus uh, 25 plus 7, 27 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 0 plus 6 is 6, 3 times 6 is 18, negative 18 plus 18 is 0. And that is my remainder. So again, just a quick reminder that we're adding these. So then the answer for this, since the remainder is 0, there is no uh, fraction in the answer. So the degree here was degree 4, so the new degree of the, of the quotient is 1 less than that. Y, 3y cubed plus 9y squared plus 2y plus 6. Remainder is 0. And there we go. And now for our last example here. This one just has a fraction with it. It's a minor inconvenience. So we simply we know that this will be y plus 3 quarters equal to 0, which give us negative 3 quarters for my r. And my coefficients are is already in order. So we have negative 12, then negative 5, then negative 1, then 1, then 3. 
and of course as usual we are going to drop our leading coefficient and then do our series of multiplications and additions negative 3 quarters times negative 12 is oops sorry we'll drop the negative 12 negative 3 quarters times negative 12 is positive 9 3 quarters of 12 is 9 negative 5 plus 9 is 4 negative 3 quarters times 4 is negative 3 negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4 negative 3 quarters times negative 4 is negative 3 again oh well positive 3 negative times negative is positive and then 1 plus 3 is 4 and negative 3 quarters times 4 is negative 3 again and then negative 3 plus 3 is 0, which is our remainder. So we just go through that process step by step. And so then the, re the, re the result, the answer, is going to be negative 12 y to the 3, because we go down by 1 degree, minus, oh, sorry, plus 4 y squared minus 4y plus 4 and then the remainder is 0 and that will stop here with the with this set of examples right now as always i strongly recommend that you do khan academy assignments khan academy assignments are very good practice exercises for questions like these you can also uh Check out openstax.org, O-P-E-N-S-T-A-X.org for free open source college algebra textbooks for practice, as uh, well as the app, OpenStax, O-P-E-N-S-T-A-X, which is free on Android, and I'm not sure about iPhone, but it may be. And as always, please practice and prepare as you uh, get yourself ready for better math.